I'm Sandra Fien. Parental Cause Effect. Something about how I ask the waitress for coleslaw startles you into my mouth. I ask for it softly, meekly the way you always did, even emphasize the awe in slaw, the way we memorize what was left of your Connecticut childhood accent like a prayer. You have no place to go but spill onto my breasts on your way to my torso. Remind me my breasts are your breasts, as tiny as your frame remained. Your breasts defied your size, but your petite frame, the part of me that always trembles your name, defy my landscape of sizes. Your foreign language of white scars climb my arms too. I survey the map of us while I blot lipstick. Dad suffered his third stroke last week, but because we made sure he avoided hospital, lifted himself from a fog that vows to keep thickening. On a Labor Day weekend, not two years ago, you comb your hair, touch up bangs, apply a light lipstick, lament you wish you weren't so old, have the look of an ill person, otherwise wait time might be short. Selfless, you loathe attention, but an ambulance might shave off minutes, return you to your home, a husband's needs, others, what defines you, but you slow things by chatting with EMTs. Tell them how proud you are of the profession they chose, how nice they look, then kindly scold them. Refuse a wheelchair at hospital arrival. You walk, perfect posture and confidence, calm, through a welcoming entrance. Two days later, a son-in-law carries, screaming, wordless, crippled you in mismedicated, newly diseased delirium, out. Determined when a gurney takes you, it will be from home. On the 10th, your husband, four daughters cram onto a single living room couch. Watch enormity of unsettled silence. Your hands wash dad's clothes, ironed, including his underwear, for 64 years. Your hands cooked meals, spilled flour, vacuumed it up, made coffee, gave him his mug, took it back to reheat, cradled four daughters, your hands on the wheel to every dance and swim lesson, wrote list after list, wrote shorthand. Your hands served him, us. He boasts missing only two days of teaching in 30 years, managed a nursing home after, published, succeeded in every career he retired. But you never retired. And I am part of a team who works to replace you, continue the habit to care, the habit to enable. Once upon a time, I was deemed hardest to love by my father. Once three sisters agreed, he was hardest on me growing up and youngest executor closest to my age was around to witness scenes erased from my memory. She runs to the basement, his words too harsh sits in a rocker, uses both her fists to punch her head, wishes it were her instead of me. Today, dark irony plays constant ringing in her ears with tinnitus as instrument and assist in head benign. She places baked potatoes, pre-made sandwiches in refrigerator for dad with your tenderness and precision, places neat instructional notes for caregivers on each 
item. Both executors say dad's congestion in his brain makes him mellower. The word sorry staccatos current conversations. He smiles often, asks me to play the piano, sing My Funny Valentine. His oldest daughter's out of state called daily, write letters, send cookies, footstools, and floor lamps in the mail. He is amorous with some caregivers. Sometimes a handshake lingers. Sometimes his hand touches a wrist, elbow, back. Words syrup to flirtation, desserts mom would have loved to receive. He veers from his walker, waltzes a few steps with one, asks me which women are married. I say, keep your hands to yourself. I get a call from my sister as I write this. She says, caregiver called her, complained. Dad asked caregiver to shower with him. Another gurney inches closer